Okay. So I think uh, for the today we'll be talking about uh, chapter uh, fifteen uh, of the grammar of graphics uh, books, and the chapter is basically about uh, talk about skills and guides um, for the learning objective. For today, we are going to illustrate that there is nothing preventing you from transforming other kinds of skills uh, beyond a uh, continuous uh, position scale. We're also going to see how concept for position scale applies uh, elsewhere. We're also going to discuss the theory uh, underpinning scales uh, and, and guides. So the note in which we are discussing using is just previous code note. I just make uh, some little editing on the text. So for the, the theory of scales and guides, so basically what they talk about that in each scale is a function from a region in the data space to, uh, to, uh, to the region in the aesthetic space because we are coming from data to, what, to aesthetics, okay? So the x-axis legend is the inverse function known as also the guide. It allows us uh, to convert visual properties uh, uh, back to back to data, uh, but surprisingly, axis and legend are the same type of thing. But while they are, uh, they look very different. They have uh, they have the same uh, purpose. So uh, they basically show us that arguments are named for each layer. Like for the name, uh, when we come to the axis, we can have uh, for, we can have label. We can also have for the legend. Uh, for the name, we have the title which is the title of the legend, which is what we can see here, the legend title. These are the axis label, we can see the axis. But when we come to the uh, breaks, we might want to specify breaks for either the X, the Y, or for the field. So we can have for the axis, uh, we can have ticks and grid lines. So we can specify between the ticks and grid line, we can apply the breaks. While for the legends, we can apply breaks we can apply breaks uh, to the to the key, so we can apply uh, breaks there. Why for the labels? The labels, the same thing goes for the axis. For the axis, we have tick label, which is what we can see here. We can see that we have tick uh, label in the axis. By why when we look at the legend, we're having key key label, which is eight, six, and four. So these are basically argument in which we can. Uh, pass uh, to the scale, we can use it to modify some elements uh, from some certain properties in our visualization in which uh, we can use the scales uh, to modify it and it is going to show in the plot. Uh, here they say, however, legends are more uh, complicated than axes and consequently, there are a number of hot topics that are specific uh, to legend because why uh, the legend is most complicated is that because if you look at the axis, the main thing we just we are just using text because we can have scale scale x continuous. We can just say the the name. We just within string we can just pass in the name. But uh, when it comes uh, to the legend, it's a different thing because within the legend uh, base we can also pass in the guides the guides argument where we can pass in. Uh, several arguments uh, to modify elements uh, in the plot. We can also specify how we want to show this legend. Should it be horizontal? Uh, should it be placed at the bottom? Should the title be placed at the top? So we can do a lot of uh, modification uh, uh, within the guides, which is what they were trying uh, to explain. Yeah, so we can do a lot of modification, but for the scale specification in ggplot2, Let's say, for example, that I am creating a graph. So I pass in this argument that ggplot, I pass in my data, I pass in my aesthetic mapping, then the geometry within the geometry, I say aesthetics, I also map color to class. So this is what we are doing. But in the background, what ggplot2 is going to do, this is what ggplot2 is going to do, is that it's going to supply a default scale is going to supply us with a default scale because we know that displacement is continuous. 
So GG plot two is going to use scale X uh, continuous. Since we are mapping displacement to the X axis, GG plot two also understand that the highway is also a continuous variable, which is mapped to the Y axis. That is why it's going to supply scale Y uh, continuous for us. Then we also understand that the class, because we are mapping color to class, we know that the class is discrete. So, and in order for it to supply, we is going to use scale uh, color uh, discrete. So this is what ggplot2 is going to do in the background because this is our initial code. This is our initial code, okay? But if we did not pass in uh, these three lines, the scale X continuous, scale Y continuous, uh, scale color discrete, this plot two is, uh, is going to uh, provide it for us because the ggplot adds the default scale, is going to add this uh, default uh, scale for us in our visualization. I don't know if uh, there are uh, any question before I proceed. Hello. Okay, so maybe let me move on. Okay, so for this other part, uh, what we're try trying to say here is that we have, this is our default uh, plot, okay? Within the X scale X continuous, we can, we can pass in the, the name for the X axis, which is a really a awesome X axis label. We can also pass in the name uh, for the Y axis, which is an amazing, uh, great Y axis label. But all this, all this can be done. We can also do this by adding a new layer, which is the labs, where we can specify, uh, we can specify the X, we can specify the Y axis label. We can also do the title, the subtitle, and also uh, the caption. We can do all this uh, within the labs. Okay, so what do they do here? Okay, so, but there are some times in which uh, we have already mapped a certain scale to maybe a certain axis. In this case, the X axis, okay? So we pass in the name, we say it should be label one. Then we now pass in the same scale, so that same axis, scale X continuous. Here we say name, we say level two. What is going to happen is that ggplot2 is going to overwrite the default scale, which is it's going to overwrite this and it's going to replace it uh, with this and it's going to return this warning. The scale for X is already present, adding another scale for X, which will replace uh, the existing scale. So at, at times we might, uh, create a visualization. We already have a scale. We want to add on a new scale. So it's going to return a warning that there is already a scale for this axis. Adding another scale is going to what override uh, that scale. So we need to uh, take uh, that into consideration uh, when we are designing our charts. So yeah, it's still the same thing here, yeah, but here yeah, we're just using name uh, lab two. Okay. So in this other example, what they were trying to do is that uh, they have created, we created our visualization here, okay? So in here, we want to place the X axis scale. We want to put it in on the square root. We apply this scale X square root. So it's going to square all the values for the X axis. Then for the color, we are changing it from scale color discrete. We are now using the Brewer palette uh, for the color. Are there any question up to this point? No. Okay, so thank you. So uh, naming scheme. Okay, the, the, yeah, they said the scale function instead for users, all, are, all follow a common naming scheme. You have probably already figured out. Okay, okay. So like for the scale, we always start with what? Scale underscore something. We always start we scale, the, the, what separates it is always the underscore, like for the scale, it's always the scale underscore, maybe scale underscore X underscore what continuous. We know that X will be on a continuous scale. So the next thing is the name of the primary aesthetics. So the name of the primary aesthetics, it can, in this case, it can be color, it can be shape, it can be X, it can be Y. So that is the primary aesthetics. So we can be scale, underscore what color. 
the third thing is going to be the name of the scale in which we want to use. So in this, it can be continuous, it can be discrete, it can be brewer. So we need to, that is, we are coming from maybe the scale underscore color, underscore discrete or scale underscore color, underscore brewer. So the first thing we know that is a scale, which we're going to attach the underscore. The next thing is going to be the name of the state primary aesthetics. Uh, the third will be the name of the scale. So that is how uh, the naming convention works. Uh, that is how the naming convention works. So for the third part, oh, fundamental scale type. So in ggplot2, they, they discuss that we have just these three uh, fundamental scale types, the scale, continuous scale, the discrete scale, and the bin scale. These are the, the three fundamental scale uh, type in which we have uh, uh, in ggplot2, the continuous scale, which must, the values must be continuous, the discrete, it must be discrete, and also the bin scale. So these are the three scales uh, in which we have. So this point mainly talks about uh, breaks. Uh, uh, talk about breaks, so let's go see what they discuss here in the book. Discussion of breaks. Okay, so the discussion of breaks, unify the concept of breaks across continuous discrete and bin scale. There are specific data values which the guides need to display something, include additional detail about the break uh, function. So I think we'll see that when we go, when we look also at the limits. So the limits, so by default, uh, this uh, this section talks about how we can specify limits within our plots. So by default in ggplot2 is that when we are creating our visualization, any data point that falls out of the limit, out of the limit in which we specify in our plot. So ggplot2 is uh, what it's going to do is that it's going to convert uh, those uh, data points will be converted to any. And those NMI will be shown with just a gray background. But uh, in order for us uh, to overcome uh, this uh, default behavior, because the default behavior is achieved using this function, scales, double column, which is called, we're calling it from the namespace, OOB underscore sensor. So which replaces any value uh, outside the limit to any. So any value that falls outside the limits of our own data points in which we have specified. So ggplot2 is going to convert it to any, but in order for us to overcome that problem, there is a new function from the scales package, which is OOB underscore squish. This OOB underscore squish function, what this function does is that this function will help, help us uh, ensure that all the data points is going to bring it closer, is going to ensure that no data points go out of the data, uh, the range of our data. So it's the values will be ensured that they remain within the range of our data in which we are using uh, for plotting. So there was an example here, we have a data frame, just a simple data frame which uh, we create. So here is ggplot, this, we pass in our DF, this aesthetics, X and Y, then we have job call aesthetics. We have fill should be X plus uh, job V line. Then X intercept, it will be 3.5, color is red. Then when we call, when we call the base, when we call the base, then this is uh, the default uh, visualization, okay? But we can want to specify the limits. We want to specify the limits for the fill aesthetics. So how do we do that? So. We have our base, which is our default plot here, plus scale field gradients, because it's a continuous uh, color scale. These values are continuous, okay? So within that scale field gradient, we specify the limits, which go from one to three. Remember here we have our values goes between one and what, six, okay? Which is the range. So here we want to specify the limits should go between one and three. So if we run that, we can see that this, this is one, this is two, and also this is three. So this is the our these values, ggplot2 automatically 
uh, he converted this value to any, it automatically convert, automatically convert these three values were converted to any. So how do we overcome this? We need a new argument, which is the our OOB. We need to use OOB to ensure that all the data points that do not go out of the range. So anyone that go out of range, it will, it will squish it to fall into that range. So we can have scale field gradients. Here we have limits. C is one to three. Then we have our OOB, which will be scales, colon, colon, squish. So when we do that, we can see those three data points that were out. ggplot 2 brought them closer to, it just fit them closer to that last data point, which is number three. Just color them. We can see that this way out. So bring them closer to this range so that they are they don't fall. Uh, yeah. So I don't know if there are any comments or any question before we go into the next part. Because I've not used this before, but when I read through the chapter, that is when I saw that, oh, there was a OOB function. Uh, I'm good. I just have one question. Uh, okay. So are these double dots again over here? Okay, so that double dot is that uh, they are calling uh, the 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 squish function from the scales package. That is from the package namespace. That is namespacing. Okay, so for me to let's see that. Let me grab this code. Oops. Sure. Which way? Let's grab that code. Five. New text five. So let's see if you have it there. Let me copy this. Okay, what again do I need? And then this. So, so here we have Yeah, this. Okay. That is the best. Okay, this is the second. Are you seeing the plot? Hello? Yeah, uh, no, I don't see any plot. I just see the council. Okay, let me reshare. Um, no way I'm supposed to be able to share my entire screen. Oh, you are seeing the plots? Yeah, I can see the plot now. Okay. So we have this. So, but what I was trying to say is that well, we have scales package, okay? You can see we have, we were calling the function from here, squish. 
you can see the function is from squish, is from the scales, squish infinite, they are OOB squish, uh, OOB squish any, OOB squish finite, OOB squish, which is the default. OOB squish is the default argument, it's going to ensure that any data points that fall outside the limits that we have specified, that ggplot2 is going to convert those data points to what any, but this squish function is going to convert and ensure those data points fall within the range of our data in which we are passing it. So that is uh, the beauty. Uh, that is the beauty of uh, the, the function. Uh, what again is the book? So that is the beauty of it. So I should go back to my presentation. So we have you have been able to see that this is calling the squish function from the scales package. So it's just namespacing. That is what they were doing there. Okay, I got it. Welcome. So scales guide, scales guide. So scales guide. This one mainly is to modify. Is no is to modify the guides, which is about the our legends. Is to control how the looks of the legend is going to look like now. Uh, we can have continuous scales for color or fill aesthetics. Okay, when we have continuous scale for both color and fill aesthetic in which we have mapped to a certain variable in our visualization. So how are we going to modify it? We can use guide color bar function within the guides. So we can say guide underscore color bar, okay? But when we have bin scales or for both color and fill aesthetics, then within the guide, we can use guide underscore color steps to modify it. Then when we have position scale for both continuous bin and discrete, what do we do there? We can use guide underscore axis to modify that. When we have the discrete scale, okay, here we can use guide underscore we can use the guide underscore legends, okay? When we have the bin scale, we can also use guide underscore bin to modify that. I think they talk about this in, uh, we have discussed about this in our previous discussion here. We were talking about in chapter 11, we're talking about look at guide underscore color bar for continuous uh, color step scales. We also look at guide underscore color steps, guide underscore axis, guide underscore legend, guide underscore bin. This guide underscore axis, when we're discussing in chapter 10, we can see that when we have, like for the X axis, like uh, for the X axis, we can have some text, okay, in which those texts, uh, they, are, they are overlapping each other, they are cluttered in the X axis. So we can use guide underscore axis, then we can, we can, we can pass in the notch to specify that those texts it can now arrange them in such a way that uh, our reader, our audience uh, will be able uh, to read uh, the our visuals. So let's see that. Let me see. Uh, let's see that in. Uh, okay, so maybe let me proceed. Okay, so scale transformation. Okay, so here in this case, uh, we have a, a, our base graphics. Okay, here we can pass in the continuous space, the X since here, the weighting is continuous, the name is null, the value is null, then we can say expand. Within the expansion, we just want to specify the, the limits, which is from zero to zero, we set it to zero. Then for the scale Y continuous, expand is equals to what uh is equals to what zero so when we look at the base graph it's going to be uh this because we are using geom raster which is a raster we are trying to plot because it's geom raster so when we look at uh base plus scale field gradient then trans is equals to what uh square roots so in this case we want to pass in the field aesthetics. So we want to take the square roots for the field aesthetics. 
Here we are we're having 0 0.03, 0 0.02, 0 0.01. So but scrans, we pass uh, square roots for the transformation. But we are still getting, we are still getting, we, we got this back. But if you look at this, uh, we can see the grad, we can see how uh, this uh, feel of the, how the raster is being filled. But when we look at this other, we can see the difference because we have passed the fill aesthetics. We are looking, we look, we pass in the square roots of the fill aesthetics. So we can see that there is difference uh, between uh, these two uh, visualization. So for the transformation of the size aesthetics, so here we have our data, our default uh, data. So we have ggplots, we pass in the data, aesthetics, x, y, size is equals to z plus jump points. So when we look at the base plot, so this is the base plot. So, but when we want to say scale on the scale on the base plus scale underscore size, trans is equals to reverse. So we want to place both uh, the x and the y scale or in the reverse, we put it in the reverse. Uh, what do we have here? We have one, One zero point seven five zero one. So we can see that when we place it in the reverse, we can see the order of those points. We can see the order of those points change. We can see the order of those points in the graphics, they are not the same. This is the actual visualization. When we now place it in the reverse, uh, we place it in the reverse scale. Uh, this is uh, the plot in which uh, we got. Okay, so I don't know uh, if uh, you have anything to say about uh, this sec part before we proceed. No, I don't have anything. Okay. So here they were basically talking about uh, legend. How do we match uh, the legend? So because at times we might uh, we might create our plot whereby we can we can map uh, different aesthetics for this for one particular uh, uh, one particular variable in which we have in our data. We can map different aesthetics uh, to that uh, value. So how do we deal with that? issue is what they were trying to say here. So like example, they have this example where we have size four and color is gray 20. Then they are uh, using jump point. They say color is text and the size of the text is two. So they have this uh, default uh, plot. So when uh, they now come here, they now have size is four color is gray 20, show legend force. So show legend force is, is going to remove uh, the legend for this layer. So when they come here again, jump point aesthetics, color is text, size is two. This is going to put the text there. This is text and it's going to put uh, the color there for text. So we can also have, we can also have another plot like this where we also have color is equals to text. So then we can have the base jump point aesthetic shape is equals to text. So we, we now have color being mapped to text, shape also being mapped uh, to text. So how do we deal with this problem uh, in ggplot2? Because here we are having shape is mapped to text, color is mapped to text. So, so that is mainly the tax. Uh, how do we deal with this? So what's the advice? is that you have shape map to text, color map to text, then we have scale x continue, name is null, then breaks is also null. So when we do that, we are going to have uh, this as our output, okay? So, but we can also have base plus lab shape is equals to what split legend. So when we have shape is equals to split legend, we can see that we have splitted this legend. This is for shape, this is for color because in the default, both color and shape, they were mapped to text. That is why we have this. 
both column shape, uh, they were mapped to text. So J plot will just provide one legend. But when we have color being mapped to text, shape uh, being mapped to what split legend. So this is what ggplot2 is going to do. It's going to separate it because you cannot match uh, these two uh, legend together. So for us to overcome that, we can say base plus labs shape is equals to mesh legend, color is equals to mesh legend. So we give uh, the two the same name. So when we give uh, the two the same name, uh, we are going to have uh, we are going to have that default uh, plot. Duty plot two is going to match uh, those two legends and give us just uh, just one legend. So this uh, part talks about how we will when we want to split our legend into, because we can have one uh, variable map, we want to see how we can map it to different aesthetics. So, but how do we split our legend? It's very difficult uh, for us to achieve this uh, using uh, ggplot2. So in order for us to achieve that, we need to use a new package, which is uh, the gg, gg new scale, because we want to draw a new scale on our, on our plots. So how do we do that? This our, is our base graph. So we can call the base graph, so which is going to give us this uh, visualization, our base graph. So we can now have base graph plus GG new scale. Then we are using the new scale function, which will draw the new scale plus, plus jump points, aesthetics, color is equals to cylinder, Color is equals to a cylinder, which is equals to what four? We want to use all cylinder that is equals to four. It should be mapped to color. Then size is equals uh, to one. Fill is equals to what? Any. So all co color that is cylinder that is equals to four. If that because it's going to return a logical condition. So if that condition is true, it's going to place it there in the legend as true. Then if that condition is false, it's going to put the legend there as false. Here we have scale color manual. Then for the name is four cylinder, okay? Which is going to put the four cylinder there. Then values is going to be gray 60 and black because we have two value. Gray 60 is going to be for false. Then black is going to be when it is actually true. So when we run that, uh, we can see we have draw a new scale we now have here. This is the year, this is at the two years. This is for the four cylinder. This is where it is, the cylinder is equals to four, true. This is where the cylinder is now equals to four, which is false. So I think that is that for this part. And they do discuss that. If, uh, if we want to learn more about this, that we can check this uh, documentation, which I put in the chat for the ggplot2 uh, new scale, gdplot to new scale. Okay, so I think uh, that is that. So let's go to the next. The next part is talking about uh, the legend, uh, the legend key drive. For I think this is uh, this is a new function. So uh, here they were. This is a new function because I have not uh, used this before. But when I go through the chapter, that is when I learn uh, this. So this is uh, default plot. Okay. Then we have base plus uh, plus jump line, which is just going to draw our line graph, which is just a time series plot shows from which goes from 1970 uh, down to around uh, 20, 2015. Yeah. So this is going to put the legend there uh, for which color uh, is saving. So how do we how do we modify this legend? So we can use base plus jump line. Pig life, we can use this function pig life, which is equals to what time series. We, this time series is going to be the new name uh, for for the new pig life is equals to what time series. So when we say pig life is equals to time series, we can see color. We can see our color there. Then we can see our savings there, which is going to show it in form of uh, in form of time series rather than what uh, we we. Javier, Javier initially. Okay, so I think there are several other argument functions from this key glyph. We have draw key parts. They also talk about draw key box plots. 
uh, draw key paths, uh, which, uh, which, uh, which, which they talk about in the actual uh, package uh, documentation, which I will share, which I will put, uh, which I will put in the chat. So, which they talk about uh, uh, in the package uh, documentation. So, what again? What do we have? Uh, okay, thank you. All I think. Uh, Brian join us. Uh, yeah, nice, nice. Thanks for joining. I was thanks for joining. I think. Uh, yeah, we, I didn't think I could make it, but I'm uh, here for a little. So thanks. Okay, so I can stop the meeting. I think we 